Staying in the U.S. and filing I-539. Important points. Hello, everyone. Welcome to New Wyoming Law Group's YouTube channel. Currently, many foreign individuals face job change or lack of job opportunity in the U.S., and meanwhile cannot find suitable airline tickets to depart the United States. These individuals often need to file I-539 application to change or extend visa status to B-2, F-1, J-1, F-2, H-4, J-2, O-3, L-2, T-D, etc. Their spouse and children can apply together by completing and filing I-539A form. While the USCIS is now more flexible in processing this kind of application, we still hear many I-539 applications get delayed or even denied. In order to receive the approval of your I-539 application for change or extension of visa status smoothly, please pay attention to the following points. 1. Remember to use the up-to-date version of the I-539 form, which includes questions about public charge, such as whether you received welfare after February 24, 2020. The mailing address for I-539 is relatively complicated, depending on the type of visa status you apply and your current home address. 2. You can choose to file the application online. However, online applications cannot include dependents, and each applicant needs to have his or her own I-539 form. So, if you and your child or spouse both file I-539, the total USCIS fee will be $455 times 2 equals $910. On the other hand, if you file by mailing, your dependent can use I-539A form and the total USCIS fee will only be $370 plus $85 plus $85 equals $540. The basic application fee is $370 with an additional $85 fee for biometrics. 3. Each applicant will also need to complete biometric services appointment. Currently, the USCIS supporting centers for biometrics are not open, but they are scheduled to open on June 4th. If you miss the biometrics appointment, your application can be denied. 4. When you submit I-539 application, you also need to include I-94 record to show you entered the U.S. legally. For applications to change the dependent visa status such as H-4, J-2, F-2, O-3, L-2, T-D, you also need to provide proof of family relationship to the principal visa holder and the principal visa holder's I-94 and his or her application receipt or approval notice from the USCIS. If you are currently in B-2 or B-1 visa status, you can apply to change the F-1 student visa status inside the United States. However, before the approval of your application, you cannot start taking classes in school. On the other hand, if the school will start soon but your application for changing to F1 visa status has not been approved yet, you can consider contacting the school to postpone your enrollment. If your visa status will expire soon but the start date for school or a new job is still several months away, you can apply a bridge B2 visa status to cover this gap for several months. 6. To change to F1 visa status, you need to include I-120 form issued by school, pay the I-901 SEVIS fee, and show you or your family has sufficient financial ability to pay the tuition and living expenses. To change to J-1 visa status, you need DS-2019 form. For changing to B-2 visa status or extension of B-2 status, a statement explaining the valid reason is often required. If you were once an F-1 student but later lost valid visa status or the status expired, you may apply for F-1 reinstatement, which requires explanation that the change happened beyond your control, such as school closure, project termination, elimination of credits, personal health reason, etc. 8. Part 4 of the I-539 form asks whether the applicant has ever filed immigration petition, including I-130, I-140, I-485, immigrant visa, etc. However, this does not mean you cannot use I-539 form to change non-immigrant visa status after the immigrant petition. As long as you have valid reason and sufficient means to support your temporary or extended stay in the U.S., the I-539 application can still be approved. 9. The form also asks whether that applicant has ever worked in the U.S. If yes, you need to explain the corresponding work visa or work authorization, or explain the reason and circumstance of unauthorized employment. If you have not worked in the U.S., you need to explain how you will support yourself with relevant financial documents. 10. 
After filing I-539 application to the USCIS for change of visa status or extension of visa status, you can stay in the United States and wait for the outcome. The USCIS has recently confirmed that if you file in a timely manner, non-immigrants generally do not accrue unlawful presence while the timely filed, non-frivolous application is pending. 11. If you depart the U.S. before receiving the outcome of your I-539 application, usually the application will be denied by the USCIS, which considers the application moot because the applicant no longer needs to change or extend visa status inside the United States. However, such denial usually does not affect your future admission to the U.S. if you have valid visa on passport. 12. If your I-539 application is denied, depending on the specific situation, you can choose to reapply or file a motion to reopen or reconsider or depart the U.S. If you leave the U.S. promptly, usually this denial will not affect your re-entry into the U.S. later if you have valid visa. For more information, please email us at info at nwmlaw.com. Thank you and best wishes.